A number of Muslim commentators declined to take part in this debate as they didn't want to share a platform with Majid Nawaz, the author of that piece, who joins me now, along with the political director of the Huffington Post UK, Mehdi Hassan, and the Muslim community activist Mo Ansar. You're not going to sit there and say that you didn't expect people to be offended when you tweeted that cartoon. Well, I think the point I was making was that I wasn't offended, Jeremy, and I, that's on my personal Twitter timeline. I think that's a very fair point to make. But you knew people would be offended when it went out there. I think some people would be offended. I, I can't speak for uh, the 2.7 million Muslims that are in the UK, nor can I speak for the 1.5 billion Muslims across the world. The petition that was set up only gained 1% of this country's Muslims sure. as signatures. So but I think it's fair to say that actually most, most Muslims weren't bothered by you it. You knew what you did was offensive to some. many people. Some. Some people. Yeah, one percent of this country's one percent of this country's Muslims signed a petition asking for my deselection in Hampstead and Kildon, and there are 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. That petition was sent out across the world and only gained 20,000 signatures. So I've got to say that actually it's not a majority. Some Muslims were offended, but also as a Muslim, I have the right to say I wasn't offended. But actually, what are they offended by? They were offended by my lack of offence. But you knew people would be offended by it. Some people, yes. Yeah. No answer. What could you possibly find to be upset about in that cartoon? I don't know. I, d I didn't find it particularly offensive. I think the idea that people uh, found Marjid's lack of offence offensive, I think, is absurd. I think it's palpably absurd. The fact is, Marjid has been for many years somebody who the government has used as a community leader and as somebody who speaks on behalf and understands Muslim communities. And I, the important thing is this, though, that although I didn't find it particularly offensive there were always going to be lots of people who were but going to But this is a very interesting distinction you're mm. making. You're saying you didn't find the cartoon offensive. Not particularly, no. Not really. But you found the identity of the tweeter offensive. No, I, I found the idea that uh, a potential parliamentary candidate would take steps which he knew, either knowingly or recklessly, was going to offend lots of people, and took that risk on purpose to offend those people shows a grave lack of judgment. And we but hold our parliamentary candidates to account. He said precisely the reverse. He said it didn't offend him. But linking to a website which depicts uh, profits in bed together there, or, or there, doing there, there, kind no, of no, that people no, do no, Sorry, there was no link to any I, I, th I think no, people no need to, to make that distinction. No, there was no link to any website. Let's be very clear. What I was attempting to do was simply speak up on principle for the minorities within the minorities i.e. those that we saw in this film who feel they cannot speak because they are silenced by voices that claim to speak in the name of author authenticity and tradition and say you're not allowed to express a divergent opinion. I think it's very odd to attack community leaders who, I, I don't actually know too many community leaders, only people who work in their <coughs> sphere of expertise, but to pa paint yourself in exactly the I guise in which you're attacking. Anyone. No, I, no, I don't represent You've anyone. You've just said you're speaking no. for those I'm, No, I'm not. I'm saying I'm trying to speak in You represent the Liberal Democrats. I, in Camden, where they elected me, <laughs> of course, uh, because I've been elected by them. But so I as a Liberal Democrat <laughs> parliamentary candidate, yep. you knew that tweeting things that might be seen as gratuitously yeah, offensive. Yeah, because you know what? Speaking out against racism Wait. offends some people, Mehdi. Speaking out against homophobia offensive. So really? Something. Tweeting a cartoon? Right, so to tweeting, say look, I'm not offended a cartoon, at a cartoon, a cartoon is, is offensive to you? Against racism? Is it offensive Telling to you? Telling people to F off on your is, Twitter is it, timeline? Uh, Maddie, Potential we, constituents? Yeah, I think you've done that too. Is it offensive to you? I'm not standing you? for parliament, yeah, Maddie, Is it are. offensive to you that I tweeted that cartoon? Is it offensive to me? Yes, is it? Yeah, I, I do find it offensive. I didn't sign the petition. It's interesting you talk about... You find the cartoon you, offensive? What I exactly is offensive about that cartoon offensive? But you know what? To be honest, Maddie, I didn't sign the petition and I didn't speak out on that issue. Please explain what's offensive about that cartoon. Maddie, let me speak. I'm asking you. You've had a six minute film. Can I speak for a second? Yeah, yeah, I don't really please. care about Before Majid, I mean, before uh, Mehdi Hassan speaks, he is literally playing both sides of the fence here. He's basically saying, he doesn't want to answer the question because he knows that there are some people that were offended by it. He knows there was a lot of people that weren't offended by it within the Muslim community, outside the Muslim community. So he's basically trying to dance around this issue. And he basically says, well, you know, you're standing for a member of parliament. You were elected, okay, to be an official in your district. And, you know, you're telling people to F off. Uh, you're tweeting out these cartoons that you know are going to be offensive. What do you have to say for that? Why are you doing that? My thing is that, matey, don't you, you ask these questions to other people when you're doing it, when you're doing your interviews? So what's the difference? Now, he's asking you a question, and you're not being direct in your answers.
about the cartoons. The cartoons were you, you attention-seeking, being provocative, gratuitous, whatever you want. Look, these are, my these are Majid, can I finish a point? Yeah. My problem, Majid, is that, as, as Mo pointed out, and as a lot of journalists don't point out, you have a long history of upsetting people in the Muslim community in a gratuitous manner. That so is the real issue that a lot of people don't recognise. You found so offensive about the cartoon. Oh, I find offensive about the cartoon that in Islam you don't normally depict the Prophet. When you do depict the Prophet, you, you don't, don't depict him that. in bed with another Prophet. No, you don't I didn't depict do that, him. Man. No, you tweeted a series of cartoons. No, you tweeted I tweeted a cartoon from a series. that the viewers saw. Of course. What was offensive about that? Part cartoon. of a wider co so if you tweet one what cartoon from the you two are on the, in the question. same in, in the same boat then. In I was going to say in the same same bed. I know that would in what, offend you. In what sense? In the sense that you don't object to the cartoon so much as you object no, to the identity on. of the tweet. No, 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 no. Hold on. Let me be very clear. I do object to the cartoon. You know, I have a right no. to be offended, just as Majid has a right yeah. to be offensive. He has every right to tweet that cartoon. I defend his right to do it. I think violent threats, etc., are outrageous. The issue here is it wasn't a n other Lib Dem PPC tweeting the cartoon. That is true. I do have a problem with the identity. Offensive about the cartoon because we I saw on our screen tonight. That's because, the only one I tweeted. Because that's because that was one part of a series no, 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 of cartoons. No, that's you the can't, only one I tweeted. What uh, did you I, find offensive about that If I tweet one page cartoon. from a book, it doesn't yeah. mean I don't represent the rest of the book. Come on, Majid. Of course it doesn't. Come on, Majid. You know doesn't. perfectly well what the wider cartoons are about. Do you believe in every single view of everyone you ever quote? What? Do you believe in every single Imagine. view of everyone you ever quote? I'm not here to debate the cartoon. Right. You can debate it with Mo. I don't even care about the cartoon. You clearly do because you found it offensive. Okay. I do find it. He clearly does care about the cartoon. Oh, he clearly does. You can tell it in his facial expression. You can tell it in his, you know, uh, use of his hands. I mean, you can just see the look on his face. He really, really detests the fact that Majin Nawaz is actually part of the founder of Quilliam, which is an anti-terrorist, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're an organization that seeks to try to end, you know, terrorism on every level from any place around the world, extremism, they're fighting fundamentalism, extremism or whatever. And so this is the niche that um, Majid Nawaz wants to be in. And he's saying he's representing some people in that niche within the Muslim community, outside the Muslim community. And they're saying that, you know, all he's being is provocative and he's taking the other side. He has a right to his opinions. They have a right to their opinions. He has a right to be offensive. He has a right to be offended, just like I have a right to be offensive. There's a lot of things, folks, that offend me. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Offensive, but I didn't sign the petition. I'm I, wondering why. I think it was a mistake for people to go after you over the cartoons. I think mm -hmm. they should have gone after you because your organization for the past six years yeah. has demonized and tried to discredit yeah. mainstream Muslim organizations. I, look, and people like the Muslim Council of Britain. Let me ask you. Let me let me ask finish you the has, some of those organizations have links to terrorism. Others of them have not denounced some terrorist organizations. So Majid Nawaz is completely within his right to basically say, look, these groups that basically are saying that they're part of the um, mainstream Muslim, uh, and I'm, I don't know about the Muslim Council of Britain or whatever, I'm not familiar with that, I will do some research, but if Majid Nawaz is going after them, there must be some element of what they're talking about that does not fit with mainstream Muslim thought. Seen, because he's given a very long film here he's, in which he talks about community leaders. There's a very he's interesting point he made about outside. community leaders. Yeah. That, that Not really. He said that they don't speak on behalf of Muslims. I agree with him. No community leader I've ever met right, has claimed so you, to speak on behalf you, of Muslims. You think I've got a right to tweet the cartoon and you well, agree I mean, with my a, film. What's the debate? There's a lot of Muslim leaders out there that claim to speak for Muslims all over the world. I don't know what the heck my media is talking about. I agree with your film because it's a series, the, of, the, 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 it's a series of straw men. For you to come along yeah. and say that you're this great dissenter and reformer speaking yeah. out I against Muslims. That. You did in the film, and the reason no, no, that no, invited you on here is to give that impression. There are people with actual grassroots support in the British Muslim community who are fighting for gender rights, who are fighting against extremism, who are fighting to have debates about religion. Majid, sadly, with great respect, very intelligent guy, very articulate, doesn't speak for them. It has zero credibility in the Muslim community is... I don't think that's true at all. It has a lot of credibility within mainstream Muslim community. The problem is, is that you, Mehdi, you, Mehdi, Hassan, are not within mainstream Islam. You are more on the fundamentalist side. I would basically call you a Muslimist slash Islamist. You're not a Muslim. You're a Muslimist slash Islamist. That's how I would categorize you. So um, Majid Nawaz does speak for a huge portion of Muslims around the world, he's going to have his detractors and he's going to have his supporters.
loathed no, by many Muslims so, so, because he goes around demonising mainstream Muslim organisations as supporters of Al Qaeda. He goes around taking government sorry, money and no, parroting no. the government line on extremism. He goes around promoting ex leaders of the EDL. All right, that I, I, wa I want to bring in Mo Ansar, who's being very quiet. You. You. you are one of these community leaders, aren't you? I don't know. Am I? I, no, I've, I've never I? professed to be a community <laughs> leader. I've never bought a community leader. I've never sold a community leader. I, I, I won't parrot George but, Galloway, but the point is, I've never said I'm an appointed community leader. But Marjid and his little group of sycophants, they like painting people in black and whites. Marjid's always had an extremist mentality, and he's never... If someone's going to talk, instead of obfuscating, I would want somebody that paints people either as black or white. Maybe give a little bit of... of you know, uh, a, a shade of gray every now and then. But you want people not to straddle the fence on issues. You want to know exactly where they stand. The problem is that these guys don't like the fact that Majid brings up the, some stuff that they don't want to talk about. Never moved away from that. And I think the people of Britain, when it comes election time, will be very concerned about looking towards somebody who says, I am the gatekeeper on what is acceptable Islam in this country, Despite and I am the no one who defines it, and, and you, yet has been and rejected. And you are. No, not at all. I've never said I am. Uh, and I'm not standing for Parliament. However, somebody who's been rejected by, by every mainstream Muslim civil so society organisation so and has can no we, credibility so can we this, and right? issues, can threats can and harassment quite to other people, so I, think, I, you, I think people no, will... So of you have you a want to make yourself I, a martyr of free, can, free speech, can, Marjorie. Can, can, having, having had a six-minute film, you want to make yourself okay, a martyr of free speech and you're not. Neither of you have a problem with my tweeting the cartoon. And I neither do, of you do have a problem. Yeah, okay, okay, no, but you, you, but, okay so both of Captain you agree Spanish. that I have the right to. Of course. Yep. And neither of you, and neither of you have a problem with the film. Oh, I do. Margin, I, had, I had many right. problems with the film. Margin, this is a political so it's 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 sweeping generalisation about as a political so candidate, 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 should you be offending large swathes? No, you can't. As a political candidate, should you be potentially offending large parts of the Muslim community? Playing the man. He had just had that question to Margin there was. He said, as a member of Parliament. Do you feel that you should be tweeting or saying things that are going to be offensive to people within you know, your voting debt? Hey, lots of people do that. Donald Trump does that. Joe Biden does that. All politicians do that. Now, some people are a little bit more out on the edge. Majid is taking it to that level a little bit. He's basically stating his mind instead of shutting up. And you know what? The voters will decide. If the voters in his district say, you know what, I think you went over the line or we don't agree with your views anymore or you're not part of you know, what we want, they'll kick him out. They won't vote for him. Let the voters decide. Who are the two of you to decide, okay, what he can and can't say? You can't muzzle him. It's free speech. And not the ball, because what this film was <laughs> well, about film was the idea. The so, yes. <laughs> what, what this film is about <laughs> is the idea that I don't sit here to claim. As Majid I, Nawaz, I, I didn't think, on to make these can, films. I, can I? I don't sit here claiming I'm speaking on behalf of anyone. My okay. point is, well, individuals, you just made individuals right. so you speak have the right to speak on their own behalf. Right. Performers, you don't. There are plenty of people who are actually fighting. Why is it we don't see a? broader range of Muslim spokesmen. Well, Jeremy, let me answer that question for Go you. On. Let's talk about the role of the media. Tonight you have a Muslim debate with three male Muslim panellists. Where is the woman? Where is the Muslim woman? There was a Muslim woman panellist. Your producers dropped her before the show began. So your viewers at home think, well, there are no women who can speak within the British Muslim community. As oh, Sarah Khan rightly said... Uh, bring up the point right there. If that's true, and it seems to be, but like I said, is if he says that the producer dropped it at the last minute, not having a woman on the panel, very, very wrong. There absolutely should have been a woman, you know, on this panel as well to give her opinion. In that film, there are women who've been active within the Islamic community for centuries. Where are they tonight? This is Newsnight's discussion. The media has there, to take responsibility for who they choose to speak on behalf of. There were of two women in that film. Actually, yes, there were, one of them was an ex Muslim. And where's the, where, the woman was dropped? I think that was a mistake with the yeah, greatest yeah. respect to no, folks. I think that was a mistake. I, I, the not have a Muslim woman on the panel speaks volumes about the media's role. You replaced a woman on the panel. I would have been very happy to see a more diverse cross section of systems. You ask a really important question, Jeff. Absolutely. Now, you ask a very important question, which is. In the media because Some, the media goes to a, people who a, have no a mainstream, on a, a mainstream yeah, media, one second, a mainstream media commentator attacked me this weekend on Twitter because he believes me to have homophobic views without actually checking that I've been standing for, for gay rights and working with the transgender community for over 15 years. Now, I, I wondered, had he just seen my... Now, there's something. There's a Muslim community activist working on their behalf for gay rights, for transgender rights, says he's been doing it for 15 years now or whatever. So there's 
like I said, there's a whole diverse cross-section of Muslims. Now, some people in the Muslim community are going to be very upset with that, that why are you working for trans rights? Why are you working for gay rights? There will be some people in the Christian community, in other religious faiths, it'll be the same thing. Whether a priest was doing it you know, for gay rights or for transgender rights, they'll be upset and say, well, what are you doing? Because that's what they believe that, that you shouldn't be. But freedom of expression, freedom of choice, freedom of where you want to you know, put your work, uh, who you want to help, all the more to anybody out there. Profile picture. Mm. And he said, Well, when I complained about it, he then insulted me. Well, you can't call, get away with he, this. He, he, he then insulted me. You can't. And then said, Well, you'll right. never come on my show again. Now, if that's how we use and abuse the Muslim voice in this country, we've just got a lot Just, no, 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 just no. to answer Maggie's main question who speaks for Muslims? Muslims speak for Muslims. Well, fact, and I wish yeah, journalists yeah, would yeah. understand that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Rather okay. than picking people to speak on their behalf. Thank you. Very passionate, fire discussion. But I think it was fairly. Um, I mean, there wasn't a lot of insults or stuff being thrown around, but the passion was there in everybody's position. And my final point is going to be, is look, there's a lot of things that offend me, a lot of things in life that are offensive to me. But you know what? As long as they're not hurting me, as long as they're not committing any type of act of violence on me, as long as there's no threats to my being or to my house or to my property or those kind of things or whatever, hey, you know what? I've got to live with, there's a lot, your friends, family members offend you with what they say, with what they do, with maybe how they dress, how they talk, their viewpoints on all kinds of issues. You'll find that offensive because you'll say, why don't you believe what I do? And they'll find you offensive because they're going to say, why don't you believe what I do? As far as the religious cartoons or those kind of things, do they offend? Yes, they do. But that goes for me across the board. I'm not selective in terms of the religion. Because I can't stand the fact when they've got um, the, you see in the museums over here, well, they'll have the crucifix, Prophet Jesus, and he's in a vat of urine. That, to me, is offensive. The American flag burning, offensive. The American flag put on the ground, and what you basically say is, you know, stomp your feet on it and rub all the dirt all over it. The American flag with feces on top of it, all offensive to me. I don't care what it is. There's a lot of things. Making jokes about revered figures in history, revered figures in religious faiths, revered figures in the non-religious faiths. That's offensive to me. But you know what? Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, we have that here. So just because I'm offended doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, if, if, like I said, there are a lot of things that are going to offend you in life. And you just have to sort of, you know, live with it. There are things that I say that offend people. They're going to be offended by this show. Going to be offended what I basically just said right now. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. Hope we haven't been too offensive for you today. If you haven't done so already and you like our content, we'd love for you to go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, sh like, share, and follow. You all know what to do. My final thought, when you're right, you're right. And sometimes that can be offensive. And when you're left, you're wrong. And that's always offensive. Anyways, folks, until next time, take care and stay safe.